right before they called action, Alex leans over and says, like, hey, Trey, you've acted before, right? Okay, and action. <laughs> Hey, Against the Tide media viewers. Welcome to Talking Back with Tara and Barb. I'm Tara. And I'm Barb. We're here this week at the Christian Worldview Film Festival and Guild. And we are so happy to be joined today by Trey Reynolds. And Trey has been part of some of the most popular faith-based films like Woodlawn, War Room, Risen, and Overcomer. Thanks for joining us today, Trey. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, you certainly wear a lot of hats. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, so I've been in production for about 20 years. Uh, started uh, working at a, at a church for four years. I did their media uh, <clears throat> and was fortunate to do a lot of mission trips, went around the world and got mm -hmm. to start doing some kind of short form documentaries on what our church, what other ministries were doing. Uh, this was right after 9-11. So I got mm -hmm. to go to Afghanistan and India and do some things like that. Moved into running my own production company for 10 years at, in Memphis. And we did everything, corporate, commercial, video work, uh, documentaries, all that type of, you know, it was a service-based industry. Uh, and then um, I ended up Leaving that company, sold that company, and went back out on my own as just a producer, director, editor, and ended up producing and directing a couple. I was in the, because we did a lot of sports documentaries. So I got in, I lived in that sports world for a while. <clears throat> ended up doing a CBS sports show, right? You know, a couple of years did that, where it was broadcast nationally. And mm -hmm. I got a taste of what it was like in the fast paced TV world. But my heart was always to do. Uh, feature film and redemptive stories and faith stories. And at that time, you know, the Kendricks and the Irwins and uh, more and more faith films were getting bigger and bigger releases, bigger budgets. And I was just like, I'd love to be in that world, um, not knowing what that looked like. And then five years ago, I moved to Nashville. Mm -hmm. I worked for Lifeway, uh, ran Lifeway Films. And that role is where I worked with the Kendricks and the Irwins doing War Room and Woodlawn and mm -hmm. And it really was more on the marketing side because uh, I, in my previous business, I'd made content and then had to take it to market. So we were also like an ad agency. So I've, I have worn a lot of hats from producing, directing, editing, but also on the marketing side. And that really started me creating these relationships in our faith film world and our little family that we have. Mm -hmm. Um and then, I, but my heart was always in production. It was in producing, directing, and editing. So, uh, over the last four years, uh, I've been in production, and I've worked on Overcomer and the movie Indivisible. And most recently, the last ten months, we just produced two films. Um, currently, now that I'm with Provident, mm. oh, wow. can you talk about those films that are up and coming? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so, we have one film that we shot last October and November, and this was 2019. The movie's called On the Line. It's a true story of a Mexican orphanage. Uh, mm -hmm. Back about five, six years ago, a hurricane came in and did a lot of damage to the town. And these orphans were going to lose their home. They were going to get kicked out because they had all this damage. They didn't have the money or the resources to fix it up, and the kids were going to get kicked out on the street. How much food do we have left? About a week. It's in Cabo San Lucas. Mexico, they host the Super Bowl of deep sea fishing tournaments where millionaires bring their yachts down and whoever catches the largest blue marlin fish wins millions of dollars in cash and prizes, right? Well, they waive the entry fee to local fishermen because of the hurricane. And through divine intervention, these orphans team up with a local fisherman. With them? Those kids? Bad news bears on the water. You get these orphan kids who've never fished. They're throwing up, you know, but having the time of their life. Not knowing what's going to happen. Well, spoiler alert, they catch the largest fish. They win the tournament and they save the orphanage. Wow. And so that's a true story. Uh, and we, we shot that this past fall. Uh, Dennis Quaid is our boat captain. He's our curmudgeon, old boat captain. And then we partnered with the skit guys. If um, yeah. you know who the yeah. skit guys are. <clears throat> Been doing ministry for 20 years, teaching the word of God through humor through short film videos and live events. Three, four years, they've had this dream to go into a long format, that feature film world. And they brought us a script a year and a half ago. Uh, and we just love, I love the idea of, I got four kids. 
And a lot of our faith films are kind of heavy drama, right? It's for, you know, you don't really take your 10-year-old to go watch War Room or, you know, God's Not Dead or something like that. Those are great movies, but it's not something we typically would take our kids to. Mm -hmm. And so we were really excited that they brought us a a comedy, a Christian comedy that is for the whole family. And it's called Family Camp. And so we just shot that in Oklahoma. And so those two movies are in post-production. We're blessed that we have a couple films in the can, as they say, uh, especially during the, the COVID and the mm-hmm. pandemic and while everything's kind of shut down, that we can keep working on those uh, at this time. Do you know when they'll come out yet? Or uh, we, We're hoping 2021. Um, so we'll just we'll see what happens in the world. Can't wait. That'll be great. Trey, when you told your story about the orphanage in Mexico, I got goosebumps. And I've been to an orphanage in Mexico, not the same one because I was in a different city and I've held those babies. And so um, I look forward to watching that. It'll make you cry. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cheer. It's we're really, I'm really proud of it. And I can't wait to be able to get it out in the marketplace Mm -hmm. for everyone to see it. That's exciting. So you did mention that uh, one thing that you've done is editing. Uh, Can you, with the little experience I have, it takes me a lot of time to do a little bit of editing. So can you speak to that a a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I got into the industry film video because I wanted to be an editor. Like as a teenager, you know, going through film school, that's where I really cut my teeth. Because at the time I I just felt like, Hey, that's a, that's a trade skill. That's a craft. Someone's always going to shoot something and they need someone to edit it, right? Tell a lot of people that ask me about getting into filmmaking and everything. The editor is a great position because you begin with the end in mind. The editor gets, you know, everything that's been all the creative decisions and planning and pre-production and then what they actually shot, you know, it ends up in that editor's hands. And he's like, I got to make sense of all of this because what he creates is what the, the audience watches and experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was always just fascinated with how do you put all those pieces together? Uh, and so I loved editing. I still love editing. I've, I've cut many trailers and I've done 17 documentary films and it's just a lot of fun. Plus you're not sweating and out in hard labor. You're actually in an air conditioned room <laughs> like we are right now and get your cup of coffee and you can edit. Uh, but that, that's really what I loved about editing is just kind of learning how to tell a story with the elements that are given to you. And I think that makes you a better filmmaker, whether that's a gaffer, a key grip, a director, a you know, producer, because when you're editing, like you learn, oh my goodness, I wish I had this. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, we need to go film this because this would make the final piece that much better. Mm-hmm. So when you spend a lot of time doing that, and it is, it's, it's time consuming, but you begin to learn, oh, I need to make better decisions at the beginning mm-hmm. to make sure that I have what I need when I'm at the end editing the movie. Mm. Good. So would advice you would give someone wanting to produce films, would you suggest that they start with editing and work their way backwards to directing or writing? Or how, how, would, you, how would you advise somebody wanting to get into films? Producing films. Producing films, yeah. You know, I keep, I meet people of all different types of skill sets and different backgrounds, and I think you have to take that into account, you know, uh, about what's, what's your history, what's your experience, what are you passionate about? Uh, someone who, I just spoke with someone earlier who was in finance. I mean, like, he's a finance major, and he's looking to get into producing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a great skill set because that's a part of the the producing role and job is like raising money, managing money. Um, But I would probably tell someone like that who's in finance, it's important to expose yourself to the different roles, whether that is editing, uh, whether that is the grip department, um, so that you can build a, a, a respect and an understanding of like how all the pieces come together. A producer basically is in charge of the, the, the whole project, like managing all the pieces. Mm-hmm. Take what the screenplay is, take the money, and then say, okay, I'm going to deliver the final film, and I'm in charge of all those little pieces, mm-hmm. being a good steward of those. Doing all the sports stuff that I've done, one of the things that I've, I've learned from being around all these coaches and athletes is that... Every 
person's job matters. And a lot of times we get in the mindset of like, we're just focusing on what we got to do. Like, this is my job. And as opposed to realizing like, well, wait, my job affects, you know, this crew person's job and what they do affects me. And if I can respect what they're trying to accomplish and have an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish and see the bigger picture of how what they do is that puzzle piece, then I'm going to be able to be better at my job because I'm going to help them succeed because I know it's going to help me succeed. Hmm. You do all of that together when all those crew people are working with that mentality and respect for one another. Uh, man, that makes the producer's job so much easier because they're like, oh, yes, they're all, they're all working together. You know, I use a sports analogy all the time of like not everybody can be the football player. Not everybody can be the running back or the wide receiver. We need an offensive tackle. We need a tight end. And because if they don't block and tackle properly, mm-hmm. you know, I can't move the ball down the field. And it's a great illustration, even for filmmakers, is like, I need to understand the role of the editor. I need to understand the role of the director. I need to have a healthy respect for, you know, what hair and makeup is doing. Ultimately, all of us are working together to get, move the ball down the field and get this accomplished. A lot of moving parts, for sure. Yeah. Um, you spoke to delivery. So some films, they get up to the part of delivery and they're not distributed. There isn't much of an audience because it doesn't make that launch. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us what is needed in a film to have the potential of um, having it delivered for people to be able to watch it? Oh, goodness. We need an hour conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and lightning. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, again, begin with the end in mind, I think is a great quote for every filmmaker to think about. Um, it is very difficult if you begin and you go make a movie, you raise some money, and you get to the a finished film and you're like, oh my goodness, there's not a market for this. Mm. How am I going to sell it? How am I going to get my investors' money back? Mm-hmm. That's a scary place to be. Mm-hmm. So I always say, you know that. So before you even spend a dime, before you spend a lot of energy on writing a screenplay, take the time to learn the industry. What what are the trends? What works and what doesn't work? There's a reason why, you know, in our film development, I just, I looked at some stats. There's about 2,500 films that get made every year. Mm-hmm. 600 of them make it in theater, some theatrical release. Only in the last five years, we're averaging eight to 11 faith films being actually theatrically released. Mm. Um, and if you go to a thousand screens or more, that goes down to like one or two. Uh, so you got to look at that and be like, okay, well, there's probably 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 really good screenplays. Why did they pick that one mm-hmm. versus that one? To mm-hmm. make? Why did they put millions of dollars behind this film versus this one? And that's where you need to spin and wrestle with. Yeah. Talk to, you know, whether it's me, other other folks in the industry that are like, you know, shepherding films or investing in films is like, you know, there's the intangible of, you know, what is God telling us to do? And how do we, we want to follow his leading? But there's also the business aspect. There's kind of some certain things that we look at that dictate why we would invest in making that particular movie, because we think that would help set us up for success when it comes time to distribute. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes sense. That was very informative. In fact, you already answered a couple other questions I had. Like I wanted to know the percentages and the numbers. And in fact, I was trying to figure it in my head as you were talking. So that was really informative. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Great. So before we hit that, I, I've got to talk to you about Overcomer, yep. the special features, you and Alex. Oh, um, that was great. <laughs> so we had to rewind and watch it. Rewind. Talk to us yeah. about that. Oh, my goodness. So I was the production manager and then helped produce a second unit on Overcomer. You know, it's all hands on the deck. Everybody's there. It's kind of funny. Every now and then there's a scene that comes up and we're like, hey, we need an extra in the background. And we look around like, what crew has not been in the movie yet? <laughs> and they're not, they don't look sweaty. <laughs> you, yeah. you go stand back there. Yep. Um, and it was kind of one of those moments. It was like, hey, we haven't really, uh, you know, cast anybody for this role of the dad that comes up and tells Alex they're moving. There's no dialogue. It's you know, Sherry. Through the window. Just yep. Look through the window. And so, like, hey, Trey, you want to do it? I mean, you look like a dad. And I'm like, well, I do have four kids. <laughs> uh, and uh, so it was just one of those, like, hey, let's do it. I'm like, sure, no problem. Uh, and it's funny. A lot of people, I tell people, like, right before they called action, Alex leans over and says, like, hey, Trey, you've acted before, right? Okay. And action. 
And of course, I was like laughing and I'm supposed to be serious. Uh, and then we, we took it a couple of times. And then Alex is like, hey, this would be fun for the bonus picture. Let me just like kick your butt. Really, you know, and I was like, all right. I was like, whatever. So we just had fun. With it. It was, and it was, it was the two of you. There was no, there were no stunt doubles or no stunt doubles. We just, I, you just, I said, just hit me in the gut. I'll sell it oh and then throw me to the ground. I'll That's like, so funny. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. <laughs> it's a little, yeah, it's a hidden little bonus feature. Oh, that was the, so the bonus materials in that movie were some of my favorites of any yeah. any movie I've ever seen. They're a lot of fun. My favorite is like the sixty seconds. The movie yep. The 60 yes. Seconds. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're talking with great. Steve Holfish tomorrow, so I want to ask him about <laughs> that. I don't know if he edited that, but the there's also the don't mess with the editors. Don't mess with the editors. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, they can change your movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I all talk those. It was it was great. It was fun to watch all those um, behind the scenes and. It was so informative. Alex and Steven, they're they're a blast. <laughs> they they just they're brothers, right? They goof off yeah. and they have a good time, and it's a oh, lot of that's fun. That's awesome. It's great. We'll wrap up with just a quick little lightning sure. round. What has been some of your favorite vacations as a family, or where would you like to go? Uh, growing up, my favorite vacation was we we, we would go skiing in Colorado. Oh. My my parents actually were on the recreation ministry of our church, and they <gasps> plan like the two church trips every year nice. so we got to go and uh, so i loved love snow skiing uh and then as my family i got four kids from the age of five to 13 um this past year i took them to disney for the first time oh, and nice. they, they were all at the perfect age yeah and so uh and then like the whole star wars and you know my my 13 year old and 10 year old they were just in, in hog heaven. So, <laughs> and it was kind of like, it's cool. You know, dad gets to kind of make movies and they've been to set and see everything. So oh, awesome. it was, it was fun to watch them kind of experience the movie world, you know, through Disney and Universal Studios mm -hmm. and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff and, and see them kind of know what's going on. Okay. Last question. Yep. Um, favorite verse. Favorite verse. Uh, this is tough. I got a few. Um, uh, Zephaniah 317, uh, where it talks about how he sings over us and quiets us with his love. Mm -hmm. It's a really odd verse in there. Um, Habakkuk 3.2 has been my church's verse uh, that I've really clinged to. And it says, Lord, I've heard of your fame and your deeds. Would you renew them in our day? Would you make yourself mm -hmm. known? It's kind of like we hear all the stories of what God's done in the past or another, but it's like, God, do it in my, my time. Mm -hmm. You know, still show yourself today. And then the third one is, uh, you know, just let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And I think that's what filmmaking is, what we're doing, whatever you, whatever your job is, is whether you're helping your neighbor or, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing accounting, you know, for a business, it's how you conduct yourself. And, you know, it's that old age of, share the gospel use words sometimes when necessary yeah. you know, yeah. just, so yeah awesome well thank you so much yeah. for talking with us today this was great well thank y'all for your time yeah thanks Trey Thank you for checking out this Against the Tide media video. And you're probably asking yourself, how can I watch, watch more great interviews? Well, you're in luck because Against the Tide media's YouTube channel has tons of great interviews. You'll find chatting with the chosen interviews, 53 questions with Raina, Zoom rooms, host interviews, and us talking back with Tara and Bart. While you're there, like this video, hit subscribe, and click on notifications so you won't miss an interview. And don't forget to like Against the Tide Media on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Thanks again for watching. hit record and that way we've got two videos and two audios Just hit the record there. yep there we go
Um, we want to respect your time. We only want to go 10 minutes. Okay. So at about the nine minute mark. I'll give you pardon? I'll give you 15. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And then I uh, will wrap things up. All right. So, Sounds yeah. Good. Great. Oopsie daisy. Thank you. Come on. There we go. Do you feel all set? All good. Okay. Okay. And I'll clap. Hey, Against the Tide media viewers. And as opposed to realizing, like, well, wait, my job affects my, my crew, you know, this crew person's job. And we'll wrap up with just a quick little lightning sure. round and then um, we'll go from there. Um, might be a long shot here. Do you have boating experience? Boating? Not really. Okay, the reason why I asked that, no, you might have to edit it. Uh, when you spoke earlier today and you, sp talk, you spoke about boating, mm -hmm. I was just like, it sounded it seemed like you had experience on a boat, how you described that in your message. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I grew up on, I didn't grow up on, but we, we would go to the lake often, so I know how to water ski and that type of boating. Ocean, no, I had to, even what we just shot in October, I had to take drama meme because uh -huh. the days we were out on open water, I was, you know, <laughs> I, was, I did not have my sea legs. All right, <laughs> yeah, how, how you describe that, I could picture, I could picture it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for talking with us today. This was great. Well, thank you all for your time. Yeah. Thanks, Trey. Um, and cut. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I forgot about the microphone. <laughs> no worries. My favorite is like the 60 seconds. The yep. The 60 yes. Seconds. Yeah. Yes. We're, we're talking with great. Steve Holfish tomorrow, so I want to ask him about <laughs> that. I don't know if he edited that, but the there's also the, the editor's... Uh, don't mess with the editors. Don't mess with the editors. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, so. they can change your movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that you've done is editing. Yeah. Uh, can you, I, with the little experience I have, it takes me a lot of time to do a little bit of editing. <laughs> <laughs>